forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at Fed Cyber in Arlington, Virginia speaking with some of the sponsors and right now I'm speaking with David Mestas. He is the CTO of Bandora. How are you, David? I'm doing fine, thank you. Excellent. So I want to learn all about Bandora. What can you tell me? Well, Bandura is a product that allows our customers to be able to control access to their networks in two ways. One is by country of origin. So if you're not doing business with certain countries, you don't need to allow that network traffic into your countries. And there's certainly some countries that are higher risk than others. You know, China comes to mind, the Russian Federation, we have a lot of attacks coming from those countries. So if you're not doing business there, you can shut that traffic down. But the other thing that we do that's really unique is we consume IP risk intelligence from multiple sources. Those can be commercial sources like WebRoot or Emerging Threats Pro. They can be open sources like Internet Storm Center, uh, DShield, or they can be information that you pull from your own network. So our customers have intrusion detection systems. They're monitoring the networks. They know who the attackers are. That can feed into the polywall. Once we get those feeds in, what we do is we assign a risk score to each connection as it comes in. So. Uh, for instance, we may have categories for command and control, for botnets, uh, for drop sites, for uh, exfiltration of data. If an IP address, we've got intelligence that it's, say, a command and control server, and the policy says if it's 80% probable it's a command and control server, don't allow that connection. So we take all those threat feeds and we come up with a combined risk score, and if it exceeds the policy set by the users, we drop the connection, and we don't even allow that to come into the network. So that helps the networks be a lot more secure, and it also works for egress filtering. So not just what comes in your network, what leaves your network's really important. Uh, data loss prevention is a really big thing these days. How do I keep my intellectual property in? How do I keep personal uh, identification information in my network? And one way you do that is you keep your users connecting out to botnets and command and control servers and stop those high-risk connections. It won't stop data exfiltration, uh, but it certainly helps mitigate the risk of that. And it also makes it easier than for people to look at their firewall logs or IDS logs because there's a lot less information in those logs now. What does get through is going to be the serious, high-risk, state-sponsored, uh, criminal organization type stuff that you really need to be concerned about. Definitely. Um, what makes the Bandura product different and unique from any other? Well, one of the things that's unique about our product is the user interface and the way we set it up. The polywall is actually a policy-based firewall, the concept being that you should define the policy of what is allowed to connect into and out of your network based on what is the associated cost if one of those assets gets hacked or has some data compromised from it. So rather than building rules like traditional firewalls do, is we allow the users to create policies, and one of those is a graphical policy for countries. You just go in and click the countries you want to allow in the network, and then we take care of the underlying access control mechanisms. So as new IP addresses are assigned to China, if China's being blocked, we automatically adjust the filtering mechanisms based on the policy. And we do the same thing for the risk profiles. You set what categories you're concerned with and what your acceptable level of risk is for those categories. And as new information appears for those particular IP addresses, we take care of the filtering mechanism under the covers. So you don't have to do that. Okay. Is there any way for um, maybe malicious activity going on in these other countries, is there any way for them to kind of get around your product and act like they're coming from a country that they're not? Well, you know, that's interesting because that was one of the reasons we originally started doing the IP reputation filtering is because people were coming through Tor networks and through proxy nodes. And those are two of the categories, actually, for the IP uh, risk intelligence feeds we have is Tor networks, which is a very high-level anonymizing type network and for proxy nodes. So when they come through those nodes, you can go in and say, if they're coming to my e-commerce server and they're coming from a Tor exit node, then don't allow them to connect up. So we use that IP risk information to prevent them from doing that. And it also works if it's an allowed country. So if you're allowing traffic from the U.S., there's still a lot of bad guys in the U.S. you don't want to allow connections from. Right. And that's what our product helps our customers to be able to do. Um, what would be like your ideal customer or client that could make the best use of Bandora? 
uh, the one that buys 100,000 products and pays in cash, that would be our ideal customer, but uh, typically the ones that benefit a lot from this are the ones that either have compliance issues, uh, the Office of Foreign Asset Control mandates certain countries that we can't do financial transactions with. So the financial community gets a lot of advantage from this, from being able to block those countries and show their auditors they're in compliance. And also anybody that has any information they don't want to lose in finance certainly is one of those sectors where they lose real dollars if their networks get compromised. So to be able to be in compliance and also protect their financial assets, it's a big plus for them. Right. So you were showing me the Bandura user interface. Um, can you show our viewers at home a little bit about how it works? Sure. Uh, this screen here is a screen that shows you the live uh, traffic flowing through. Now this is traffic we've generated, but this is live traffic. And we see that there's a lot of traffic from Iran and Iraq here. And typically I may not want this in my network. So to be able to block this traffic, we can do this very easily by creating a graphical profile. So right now the policy I'm running for default is called the ingress policy that I'm looking at here. And we can see every country's allowed. I can simply go over here and click on Iraq and click on Iran to deselect those. And now those countries will no longer be allowed access to the network. I'll submit my policy change. And when I go back to my graph, I see that the traffic from Iran and Iraq has gone away. So it's very easy to create graphical policies to allow you to control what you want to block and uh, what you want to allow into your network. Now, all the information you see here as far as where traffic's coming from, what's being allowed and what's being dropped is all logged and we can have the ability to send that to a Splunk server. Uh, and with Splunk you can go out and you can take a look and you can see here's uh, the last minute of activity we've had on the polywall and we can see where the traffic's coming from. Uh, we got a breakdown of the top 10 countries and I'm going to refresh this. And we can see that the bar for Iran has gone down uh, considerably from what it was before. So we have less data coming through. But this lets you see trending, you know, where traffic's coming from. If you see anomalies, if one day you walk in and you say, well, there's a lot of traffic coming in from Sweden, we don't normally have that. So is there some anomalous traffic going on? Or is it just an Akamai server stood up over there serving Microsoft updates? But the key thing is it gives you intelligence as to what's going on in your network. Because if you don't know there was an increase in traffic from Sweden, you can't do anything about it if it's good or if it's bad. So you really need to know that information. So it's a combination of being able to act on information that others provide and then being a source of information that can feed back into the other information and get more refined and more accurate to what we have. So I can see that you can kind of toggle on and off your connectivity to different mm -hmm. countries. Are there certain like circumstances where you'd want to be connected to everything and other circumstances where you wouldn't? Yeah, abs absolutely. So every asset in your network that's connecting out to the internet or receiving connections will have a different uh, risk and associated with that. So for instance, your public facing web server, you may not care so much who connects up to that because if somebody does get into that web server, it's in a, a screen subnet, uh, the, the risk of what you lose is not as high. For instance, your commerce servers where you have your shopping cart applications, somebody breaks into that, they may have access to credit card information, they may be able to go out and forge transactions, get uh, access to financial assets. So those you might want locked down even more. Uh, something like a VPN access point might be locked down even less because you're using two-factor authentication. Users are using maybe a smart card or a USB uh, access token to gain access to that. So now we know who that user is, so I may not be as concerned. And that's a great way to handle people that are traveling. So if they're traveling to a foreign country and that country's blocked, as long as they're using a VPN access point and they're using two-factor authentication, we can be a lot looser with those IP addresses, but still block the ones from the IP reputation list because those wouldn't be the ones that my employees were using. Right. Um, now, with the increase of threats coming in from other countries in recent years, where do you see Bandura moving in the future? Well, we've made a, a strong focus right now in our products of risk management, and we're moving more and more towards automating the pieces of that. So things like the vulnerabilities of web servers right now, that's a, a manual process when you configure that to assign a vulnerability to that web server in the future will be consuming more information about that uh, device in the network so we can get even more refined with our risk scores and be more proactive with that and more reactive. So when a network scan is run against a device and a vulnerability is found that needs to feed into security products 
uh, and have the security product then react to that and adjust the acceptable risk level for that asset because now it has a known vulnerability. So we're focusing more on automating a lot of those tasks and a lot of those things around dynamically changing your profile because the security environment, the threats are so dynamic, they're changing so quickly, we really need products in the market that can react as well. Definitely. Well, Bandura sounds like a great product. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your information about it. It was my pleasure. Definitely. And everyone at home, make sure you don't miss any of the um, interviews I'm doing with exhibitors here at Fed Cyber. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter so you don't miss anything. And thank you so much for watching our coverage here from Fed Cyber. I'm Alicia Webb. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.